I think anyone who's read Colossians recognizes that it's all about Christ, that it, it teaches us about Christ or it teaches Christology, and, and that's pretty widely recognized. I, I like to say if the New Testament is the Rocky Mountains of Christology, then Colossians is like it's Pike's Peak. It, it sticks out and it, it teaches us particular things about Christ. And I, I think some things that stand out to me and to others are in chapter 1, Paul gives a poem about Christ that speaks about his preeminence in everything. It speaks about his preeminence as the one through whom God has created the world, so in creation, and it speaks about his preeminence as the one through whom God is now reconciling the world. So really, in a sense, all things are held together by Christ from beginning to end, and, and he is over everything, and we can trust him for everything. On another verse I think that stands out to me in the Christology of Colossians is Colossians 2.3 where Paul says, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. If there's anything we really need to know, we can find it in Christ. We don't have to go beyond him. And so we don't just see kind of the preeminence of Christ, we also see the sufficiency of Christ for our lives, that we don't have to go other places. And and, we, and it's, the treasures are kind of inexhaustive. We can continue to dig deeper and, and know more about Christ and there, therefore know more about everything. Another important verse in Colossians related to Christology is Colossians 2.9 where it says that all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in him. And this is just a classic text on the incarnation, on uh, God taking up our flesh on him, on himself. There are other texts in Colossians that have been important for Christological debates throughout the centuries. One that stands out to me is Colossians 1.15. It says, he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And this was a text debated in the early church because the Arian uh, heresy, if you've heard of that, would teach that Christ was actually created, that he was the first one to be born. But I think if you read that verse in context, you'll see it speaks about his role in creation as, as kind of on the creator side rather than the creation side. He's the agent of all creation. All things were created through him. So clearly Paul means he's the firstborn over all creation. That is, he takes this preeminent role over all creation. His, his relationship to creation is that he was before them and, then, and he created and therefore he's above them. And then we can see in that, that kind of first statement, he's the image of the invisible God, his relationship to God, that as the image of God, he both reflects God, uh, and yet he's distinct from God. And, and this is really, these are the kinds of ideas that we get the doctrine of the Trinity for, which of course is so foundational for our faith and so foundational for our redemption.